Summer is underway, and I want to bring you some hope and encouragement on how the hidden hand of God is at work to wake up America. You know, if you go by a newsstand today, you'll see some magazines there. And on the cover, there's a, a, one particular artist that just turned 75. She sang with Fleetwood Mac. And uh, the other one is Jane Fonda, and she's celebrating the fact she's 85. Now, when you look at the pictures, you say, wait a minute, at 75, 85, they look like they're half their age. You know, on my college campus, I remember Jane Fonda. She spoke and she almost looks the same as she did, you know, back then. That was probably 50 years ago. Well, here's the secret. Behind the scenes, there's some hidden things that are going on. Makeup, medical procedures, various things that the media can do to, you know, alter, manipulate uh, uh, photographs. But things go on behind the scenes. Well, there is a principle in the kingdom of growth and what God wants to do behind the scenes. But it's a partnership and it's a process. Stay with me. This will encourage you. You know, when Jesus gave the parable of the sower and the seed, he said, the seed is the word of God. And God works in unique ways in getting his word into people's hearts. But there is a partnership. We can't just say, well, God's sovereign. He does what he wants, how he wants, when he wants, without us. Faith without works is dead. And so we cooperate with him, but there is a process. And I want you to enjoy that process. Just like when somebody's moving into a house, I say, hey, it's going to take you a while to get settled and everything, but enjoy the process. So Jesus said something in a particular parable after the sower and the seed. Let me read this to you. Here's what he taught us. And he said this, it's the, it's the principle of growth. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a man who what? Who scatters seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. He does not know how, but for the earth does what? It bears fruit by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the full seed of the head. But when the grain is ripe, immediately he, what does he do? Well, and we're going to do this spiritually. He applies the sickle because the harvest has come. Well, there's a process there. You cultivate soil, you plant a seed in time. You don't see it. It's going on in a hidden way. And then what happens is the grain and then the kernel, and then you take that sickle for the harvest. Jesus is illustrating for us, cooperate with him in the hidden work. It's the hidden hand of God. Now, when I went to Cleveland, I spoke to the people there and I said, God wants to bring about a turnaround in this nation, but we've got to be brutally honest. These are turbulent times. We, we've got to have a blend of being optimists, not pessimists, but also realists. And so I brought them good news. Now, the pastor that was leading the event, he said, look, this is an hour we've got to be ambassadors for truth. We've got to communicate. And so he said, I want to give everyone that's here a copy of Larry's book, Bullseye, the Bullseye Challenge. I call you to it. You can go online and you can just simply click on and see 30 little videos. They're 30, what, maybe three to four minutes on all the hot button issues of today. It's free. But then there's the book you can use as a playbook that amplifies it. He said, I'm giving it out to you today. While I was there, I met a medical doctor. And this guy told me, he said, Larry, you know, I, I, when I was just a young guy, he said, I saw the book, Clap Your Hands. And he said, I got to get pictures. We went out to lunch together. And he is now in his sphere, realizing with patience that he's able to plant seeds and he is able to enjoy the process of the hidden hand of God using him. And he is trying to cooperate with God in that process. There was a young man also that used to play in the band with me, the Lost Souls. He went on to play with a group that was really, at one time, Capitol Records put their money on the line with the Beatles, another group, and then a group called Raspberries. And he was there, but he said he drifted. But God used his hidden hand working in his life and through people, drew him back to himself. And now this young man is ministering all over the city, 
I just spoke with him on the phone this morning. He had three gigs and he's able to minister the word of the Lord. But he recognizes, as it was in his life, the hidden hand of God is working. Now, let me tell you some things to encourage you because you need to know God will work in and through you. Do you know that there was just a conference just days ago here, a Turning Point conference, uh, and Charlie Kirk was leading it. Let me show you a little clip of what he said to welcome. Listen, the biggest conference they ever had. The turnout was incredible. It was absolutely a phenomenal event. Eric Metaxas spoke and David Barton and others. Watch what, watch what Charlie said. There's, there's a lot of uh, denominational diversity, and I think that's beautiful and wonderful. We believe Jesus is the center of it all. Amen. We believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. Amen. And we want to spread Jesus to as many people as possible. It's the most important thing that we're going to talk about these next couple of days. The second most important thing is to make sure we can do that first thing. To make sure that the church is never labeled non-essential again. To make sure that strip clubs and marijuana dispensaries and liquor stores There were panels. People shared. One of the things that was really exciting is the, the person that is now working along with his wife as the leader of, you like In-N-Out Burgers on California? Well, he said, we're coming to your area. They are committed Christians. And uh, his wife has shared in Decision Magazine, and maybe you've seen it on um, I Am Second. And she said she went through a rough time because now she's inherited, really, the company. And this company doesn't pull any punches. They put scriptures on the bottom of, of the cups. And she went through marriages and drugs and messed up and shares her testimony. But you know what? This man of God shared with Charlie how really they endeavored to do what was right and not compromise, and they inspired other corporations. 33,000 employees, but you know what? It's been a process, and God works in and through them. And at this conference, it was so exciting to hear testimonies. Uh, uh, Michael Orr, do you remember the movie The Blind Side? Academy Award movie, Sandra Bullock. It was the beautiful story of a, of a young guy. His, his, his dad was in prison. His mother was a drug addict. He really was illiterate. And what? Somebody reached out. And, and in the movie, what was it? He was adopted, and through a process, he came to Christ. He ended up going on in success, playing for the, the Ravens and even our Titans in Tennessee. And this young man was in the NFL, and now he's mentoring young people. And it was a process. It didn't happen overnight. But see, we've got to cooperate with the process, sowing the seed, doing everything God tells us to do. And this, I'll tell you, this conference was off the charts. Now, you know what else is going on? I went with my wife to a church in, in the area just recently. Somebody said, check it out, Pastor Alan Jackson and the church that he pastors. He pulls no punches in equipping people with the truth. And you know how many are there? You say, well, you got to back off as a leader. If you do that, if you talk about the issues, you know, you're going to lose members. You'll lose tithers. Well, he's not pulling any punches. He lays it on the line. He shares the word of God. Fifteen thousand members. Alan Jackson, that's not the singer, but his church. You know, uh, I, I see these things happening. And while he was there, Alan Jackson spoke at this conference in Tennessee for Turning Point. And then, you know what else? This was really something. And I just said, dear God, Alan said that he just got back from New York. 1,600 leaders came out. He said, I'd never seen this. They're hungry. They're starting to come out of the woodwork. We cannot be silent anymore. We need to do what's right in this hour. Do you know that I had lunch with a guy when I was in Cleveland? And this man, he, tremendous man of God, but he said, when I asked him his testimony, that he was resisting God, wanted nothing to do with it. But somebody reached out to him and in the process invited him to a church service. And this man said, his name is Bob Sturm, man of God. He went and in one service, God dealt with him. He was turned around and he has served the Lord ever since for about, what has it been, 30 or 40 years. It's a process. The seed is planted. What else is going on? Well, I look out in Florida today and in other states. Pushback to what we're seeing with trans madness. You see uh, Governor DeSantis and, and the legislature there. They've put into effect certain laws now that are going to curb some of the trans madness, drag shows, and uh, gender surgery, and all of these things. And they're not alone. Texas has now passed legislation. We're going to put chaplains in the schools. And you're seeing states that are saying, we are going to stand strong now. We're going to stand against this trans madness. We're going to also support the heartbeat bill. 
Folks, when you look around, this should excite your heart, but you recognize it's a process. Now, I've been a part of Intercessors for America prayer ministry. Derek Prince and a team of people, we're going to celebrate, get this, 50-year anniversary is coming up in November in Washington. Eric Metaxas and uh, other leaders are going to speak. We're going to have a, a prayer gathering, and, and I just invite you to check it out in November. But you know, the stats for prayer in this nation are off the charts. You say, well, wh wh what are they? Can you give us some? Let me put some of these up on the screen for you, and just look at this. This is what's been happening. It's been a process. But today we can see, listen to this, there's in just a matter of four days, 223,000 we had interactions on, uh, you know, on the site and working with Intercessors for America. We saw, and we look back on the past year, 35 million accumulated impressions. Listen to this, 12 million accumulated uh, engagements, 70,000 personal messages that went to our, polit our, our Congress. We saw over 352,000 people doing what? Well, they're plugging into the headline, headline news and they want to know accurate news. 800,000 website users, 1.3 million uh, emails that, uh, you know, that you look at uh, going forth in a weekly basis. Folks, there's a prayer movement. Thank you, Mike Bickle. Thank you, those. But we have a part to play. God's called us to pray. He's called us to proclaim the truth without compromise and fear. Courage is courageous. And, and you look back as far as reaching people, it's the same thing today. You know, I, I know some people that have shared. You say, well, there's certain people that can't be reached. Oh, you'd be surprised. I sat with a guy that told me, he said he had the opportunity when George Harrison and the Beatles was alive to literally, because his sister had been married to him, to sit and talk with George and lay out the gospel to him. How about this? My buddy Phil Kagi, who lives in our area, he's from Ohio. He was in a group there called the Glass Harp. You know who Phil is, phenomenal. He, his hero growing up was who? Paul McCartney. People say, you even sound like him. Well, when I was last with Phil, he said, yeah, he went to an event. And guess what? In the green room, who was he with? Sir Paul McCartney. Folks, I'm telling you today, God is at work. The hidden hand of God is at work, waking up people. And he wants to use you and he wants to use me. But Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It's the smallest of seeds. That was the parable that he cited right after the one that I just said at the beginning here. But he said it's going to grow. And that's what we want to do. Joel Osteen's dad, you remember John Osteen? He would say this, slow growth is good growth. Slow growth is good. So let's be faithful. Billy Graham said once on his tombstone what he wanted to have was two things put there he was faithful and he walked in integrity. So let's give ourselves in this hour, no more passivity, no more complacency, no more fear of man. The righteous are bold as a lion and let's be faithful. Prayer, participating and in doing everything we can in this process, knowing the hidden hand of God is working behind the scenes. Jesus said in leaving, he said, I'm gonna leave you with a helper, helper and he's helping us, we'll do our part, he'll do his, and we're believing for a magnificent move of God in this day. Another great awakening. Come forth, Holy Spirit. Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.